hey, have you noticed your bird scratching a lot? Well, that might be a sign that something's wrong. And so today I'm going to talk about seven common reasons why birds scratch so much and when you need to, what you need to do to remedy the situation and when you should take your bird to the vet. So uh, before I dig into uh, this, how about I tell you about, a little bit about myself. My name is Diane Burroughs. I'm the founder and CEO of birdsupplies.com and I manufacture a range of different bird wellness products from uh, supplements to plant-based to foods that are super healthy for birds and, and sustainably produced and stuff. And I've been in business 25 years uh, with birdsupplies.com and uh, I'm a licensed psychotherapist. So, and a bird lover, of course. So let me get into my talk today about why birds scratch so much. Why is my bird so itchy? So birds become itchy for, like I said, a number of reasons, and I'll dive deep into those seven reasons. But, you know, it is a sign, again, that something might not be right. Something's going on internally that needs to be addressed. So uh, the first reason that birds tend to scratch so much is they get mites. So mites are not as common as you might think. Uh, don't get me wrong, but they are a factor for, you know, budgies in particular, birds that live in larger flocks in, the, in a home, an aviary of sorts, uh, where they can pass it from one to another, and birds that are housed outside. So the three most common types of mites that are seen in birds are the scaly face mites that you see with budgies, who just, their face gets ugh, uh, really uh, uh, scabby and stuff. Um, skin and feather mites, which, you know, hide underneath the feathers so they're kind of hard to see and then air sac mites which are as dangerous as they sound um, so if you suspect mites you would want to, to take your bird to the vet and get some proper um, medication for them i wouldn't uh, ever suggest to go to a bird store or a pet store and get some of that mite spray that's over the counter because you don't first of all know what kind of mite you're dealing with and second of all, you know, I'm, I personally am very opposed to putting a bunch of chemicals on my bird's skin if I don't have to. Um, I would rather get the treatment uh, for the proper type of mites that I'm dealing with. But my suggestion is that you listen to the other six uh, reasons why birds can develop a scratching issue. And if the issue doesn't resolve on its own with what I talk about, then you might want to take your bird to the vet. Um, to find out what's going on. So the second common reason why birds tend to scratch so much is because of nutritional deficiencies. And nutritional deficiencies are one of the most common reasons that birds develop uh, health problems in the first place and they're the most common reason why birds develop a feather plucking problem, also why birds die at a young age. So nutrition is so important. Um, the avian vets that are really in the know, the know these days and really follow uh, parrot avian nutrition, you know, are suggesting that a bird be on a pellet diet. Harrison's or Rowdy Bush are the most often recommended brands. 60% uh, of the diet should be these pellets. 40% should be plant-based, raw, uncooked foods. And so when a bird doesn't get those proper nutrients from the pellet diet and the uh, additive plant-based foods, the most common nutritional deficiencies that we'll see with that are going to be vitamin A deficiency, um, omega fatty acids deficiencies, and um, zinc, and calcium, and magnesium deficiencies are all very common in pet birds. And, you know, again, it's just by feeding the proper diet, um, feeding a rich range of healthy plant-based uncooked foods that uh, will supply your birds with these veg with these nutrients. So what are the foods you'd feed for vitamin A deficiency? Well, first of all, you're gonna see, th let's talk about the symptoms first. You're gonna see that excessive scratching. You might see them scratching at their eyes or around their face, a bobbing tail because vitamin A is all about skin health and that's internal skin health as well as external skin health. So what's in the nostrils, the lungs, the respiratory system, all of that is requires vitamin A in order to produce the oils um, and the mucus and stuff that will keep it, keep your bird, um, its skin as healthy as possible. So some really uh, easily accessible um, ways to provide vitamin A are going to be, you know, through bell peppers, broccoli, bok choy, carrots, arugula, sweet potatoes, winter squash, mandarin tangerines, red palm oil, dill, fresh dill, the herb, 
mint leaves, and sage. And uh, so uh, let me uh, uh, back up here. I do have a sister blog post on this on the website, and it's essentially called Seven Ways to Stop Bird Scratching or something like that. All you have to do is type in the search bar scratching, and this uh, blog post will come up. So don't feel like you've got to, you know, like, hey, put all this stuff to memory because it's right there in the blog post too. So my company uh, manufactures a sustainable, cold-pressed virgin red palm oil uh, that's um, uh, in a nice bird-sized uh, jar that um, is a great way to provide those essential fatty acids and the vitamin A. Um, and uh, so you can get that on the website. Now, um, a lot of birds are reticent to try new vegetables and stuff. I've got a video on how to get your bird to eat uh, vegetables. I'd really encourage you to watch it. I also have a book on three ways to convert birds to a pellet diet, uh, a better diet. And most people think, oh, I just, I've tried everything. I can't get my bird to change its diet. But really, the research shows that there's three popular ways that you can use to help your bird learn to eat a proper diet um, and it takes less than a, a week. In fact, the average time that birds converted from an all seed diet to a pellet diet was four days uh, in this study. It was done by some pretty well-known avian vets. And um, so it's something that can be done very easily, very quickly, and you can just save a lot of money on vet bills and keep your bird healthy and happy at the same time. Now, omega fatty acids are also a common deficiency that we see in birds. And omega fatty acids, you know, serve a number of, of um, purposes in the body. They, but very importantly, they help regulate the oil production of the skin, just like vitamin A does. And without the proper balance of those omega fatty acids, the skin's going to become, you know, dry and irritated. The bird will get dermatitis. Um, and maybe start scratching so much that secondary problems develop. So you can uh, feed bird safe foods uh, to really make sure that your bird is getting those omega fatty acids. Now whenever we're dealing with oils and, and fatty acids and stuff, you know, and most of these nutrients, you got to feed the right amount. You don't want to overfeed them. You want to feed the right amount. Uh, so for instance, on my uh, you know, jars of, of nutrients, I'll tell you exactly what to feed them because, you know, feeding too much will, will cause uh, heart problems. Feeding too little will cause, you know, organ damage, including the skin. So some of the best ways to provide flax, I mean, to provide omega fatty acids are through plant-based seeds and nuts. So, you know, we've got the hemp seed, and this is one of the most popular products on our website. Uh, birds love it. I haven't found a bird that doesn't love it. Um, they're small. It's not, they're not THC. They're the seed that makes uh, um, marijuana, but they're not, um, you know, anything that's going to get your bird high or loaded or anything. Um, you only need to feed a certain amount, and so follow the instructions on the um, on the bag. Another way to feed the uh, omega fatty acids is, is this product here. It's called, I think it's called Badia Trilogy, and it is flax seed, chia seed, and hemp seed all combined. And these are very tiny seeds. They're almost too small, but I sprinkle them on my moist bird chop in the morning. Not every single morning. I mix up my seeds. Sometimes I'll do flax seed. Sometimes I'll do the hemp. Other times I'll do walnuts. Like some days I'll do almonds, cashews, you know, that sort of stuff. So uh, variety is the key to a healthy bird. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, and so, you know, these essential fatty acids are just really so important. Now, the other thing to think about uh, when you're looking at deficiencies is those minerals, the zinc, the calcium, the magnesium. And uh, again, those can be uh, provided in a good diet or a really nice bird vitamin like our Feathered Up. Um, and uh, but there's some you know foods again and and again hemp seed, uh, flax seed, pumpkin seed, squash seeds, pine nuts, cashews, almonds, uh, quinoa. Those all have zinc in them. And zinc and vitamin A actually work together. So there's a lot of these nutrients. You know, like for instance, with our calcium, a lot of people don't realize this, but you know you can give your bird all the calcium in the world, but if it doesn't have the magnesium and the vitamin D at the same time it's going to just eliminate, poop that calcium right out. Same thing with the vitamin A. They need zinc and vitamin A together to, um, uh, you know, actually synthesize those nutrients. 
So, uh, you know, a great book to get is uh, a book called um, The Parrot's Fine Cuisine Cookbook. I really love that book because it really talks about uh, how to properly make these chops for your birds. But it's not rocket science. You know, it is like just feeding, like I said, 15, 20 different kinds of veggies and fruits and, and herbs and flowers and nuts and seeds and stuff in their diet every day. Um, and making that, the, I make it the first meal of the day for them. Now, low humidity is another thing that causes birds to itch. So, you know, just like you or I, I live in Colorado. I mean, I think it's <laughs> the driest state in the nation, maybe. And sometimes it feels like that. But, um, you know, we have, we have very dry air and uh, that results in being very itchy uh, if you're not careful. So running out of humidifier for us is just, you know, it's just required. But birds are from tropical areas and, so, and they have very thin skin um, comparatively to us. And so when their skin gets dry, it gets even more irritating. And so um, it's really important that they have proper uh, humidity levels. Now the research says, you know, anywhere from 40 to 60 percent uh, humidity is good for birds. I don't like to keep my house that humid because I don't want to trade a mold problem for um, you know, uh, a humidity problem. So I'd keep it closer in the 30, 35 range. Um, but different birds, you know, uh, do better with a little bit more humidity than others. And so, uh, if your bird is in a very dry climate or in the winter when we're running our HVAC system furnace and the air is dry anyway, you can easily fix that by running a humidifier or by giving your bird more baths. And uh, I've got some videos on how to give a bird a bath. Uh, birds, you know, in the wild, they bathe every day. So the only reason they don't bathe for us or so why so many birds, you know, or people will say, hey, I can't get my bird to uh, enjoy a bath is because you have to train them. You have to work with them and make it rewarding for them to want to get a bath. But watch that video because it's very eye-opening on how do you can train your bird to, to uh, bathe so that its skin is soft and supple. Um, and, and that it doesn't have any scratching problems. Now, preying issues are another reason why birds tend to scratch so much. So birds learn to preen from mom and dad in the wild. Um, you know, wild birds spend all a very long time t teaching their bird everything it needs to do to stay healthy and keep its feathers in good condition and all that. So when uh, a bird doesn't, when a hand-fed bird from a breeder, you know, uh, doesn't learn how to preen properly, then they either either overdo it or ignore it completely. They don't know where their preening gland is and all that. And it just can turn into a disaster. And that can make the bird itchy. So if you think of the preening gland, which is at the top of the tail on their back area, um, many birds have them. Not all parrots have them, but many birds do. Um, then uh, birds that know how to use their preen gland will actually rub that oil all over their each and every feather and that then kind of seeps down into their skin so that their skin actually is well oiled and and so a bird that knows how to preen uh, has less itching problems now people all ask do birds get allergies well yep allergies can be the sixth reason why birds develop a scratching problem so birds can be allergic to just about the same kind of stuff that you and I can be allergic to, you know, whether it's mold or, or, or different detergents or fabric softeners, different kind of fabrics, you know, pollens and stuff like that. And so if you notice, even foods, and if you notice that your bird is scratching a lot, you might want to kind of look at the diet and what's in your, in your environment that you can start kind of testing to see if you remove that, that uh, the itching might subside a little bit. Um, and so you're, what you're watching for then is how often the bird scratches and how intensely it scratches and then you'd be watching for a decrease when, when you're trying to weed out allergens, if you will. The seventh reason that birds scratch so much is because of toxins. Now birds have very sensitive breathing systems. They've got seven air sacs compared to our two lungs and they efficiently process the air they breathe so much better than we do. This is what allows them to fly. If you could imagine flying for a thousand miles a day practically, um, you got to have a very efficient lung system, uh, breathing respiratory system. But that is uh, what makes household toxins and stuff so dangerous for birds. So what are the toxins to really keep on your radar? Teflon is the biggest culprit. Teflon cookware uh, emits 
toxic fumes into the air that can kill a bird in minutes. And so we always recommend to not even use Teflon. Uh, aerosol sprays are another thing. I never use aerosol sprays around my bird because those fine mists in the household chemicals or air fresheners and that sort of stuff uh, get into their lawns and can cause respiratory distress, which in turn uh, can cause allergies and all that stuff. And it just goes downhill from there. Um, cleaning supplies. I'm very careful about cleaning supplies, basically because I have uh, asthma myself. And I, but also for my birds, I don't like to use a lot of chemicals with odors, um, you know, that will harm my birds. So if if something causes you even a little bit of distress, your bird is in great distress over it. Things like heavy metals, um, avocado is another toxin for birds, chocolate and stuff like that. Cigarette smoke, marijuana smoke, even marijuana eating it uh, is horrible for birds. And so, you know, those are the things that definitely need to be on your radar. But that's not an exhaustive list. So keep very aware of what, it, what toxins are really bad for birds. Because if they're bad for the birds, it's kind of like that canary in the coal mine thing. You know, the birds will succumb to it faster than we will, but it's still not good for us either. So bonus tip, when to see the vet. You're going to want to see the vet if you've tried some of these natural re uh, remedies and they don't work within a few months. You're also going to want to see the vet if you're noticing bald spots and red spots, abrasions, uh, you know, where the skin's got a little bit of damage and it's cracked, uh, even around the feet area, uh, you want to check for that. Definitely if you notice flaking skin around the face. And then, you know, if you notice that your bird is bobbing its tail when it breathes, um, that's often a sign that you need to get in pretty quickly because a bird can succumb to respiratory distress way faster than you and I can. And uh, when a bird's bobbing its tail, it's just struggling to breathe. And so that is a very bad sign. And it's actually considered a, a medical emergency. In fact, you know, you would want to see the vet as fast as you can get your bird there. Now, if your bird does not get better, you know, your vet's going to want to look for uh, fatty liver disease. These are birds that have often been on an all-seed diet, uh, the kind of seeds that you buy at, uh, you know, big box stores or at the grocery store that maybe have uh, vitamin coating on them. But, you know, what good is that when the bird cracks the seed open and the vitamins all fall to the cage floor bottom? So seeds are really like feeding your kid potato chips and expecting them to grow and their brain to work properly. I mean, it's just not going to work. So you need to stick with that uh, diet that we talked about, the 60% pellets, the rich range of fruits and vegetables made up in a fine chop so that every bite your bird takes, it gets a huge burst of nutrition. And I like to feed mine in the morning because that's when they're most hungry. So what are some of the products that you can use to support your bird if it's scratching too much? So there's two different types of product categories for a scratching bird. I've got a kit that has both the internal nutrients they need and the external topicals that will help them feel less itchy. So the topicals, let's talk about those first. Aloe vera spray. Aloe vera is like a magic plant, literally. And, I mean, it's been known thousands of years for being an anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, uh, antifungal. Uh, it's just got healing properties. If the bird preens and eats it off, those vitamins in it are just like, wow, really good for a bird. So it, you can't go wrong with aloe vera spray. Then if you've ever heard of like Aveeno products, like I'm allergic to poison ivy, which is no fun if you live in a poison ivy <laughs> area. Uh, I don't anymore. But, um, uh, you know, the Aveeno is what people use, uh, this oatmeal baths. And that's what this is. It's called Feather Soft. And so it's the uh, special kind of oatmeal that you mix with water and that just you let it soak into the skin and it really relieves those those itchy uh, episodes that your bird experiences. But um, you want to kind of use both. You want to use the topical and then you want to get the nutrition in your bird too. So for vitamin A, you're going to want to feed not just the vegetables, but you're going to want to feed those essential fatty acids and uh, vitamin A that's in red palm oil. Red palm oil is another like super plant that uh, is really helpful for birds. Um, and if you think about it, a lot of these birds are kind of from the jungle where these palm trees grow anyway. 
So uh, they're eating that stuff in the wild. Now, red palm oil is one of those things you can get too much of. Uh, so you only feed a dab. Uh, the bottle on will tell you exactly how much to feed per the bird's weight. And you want to kind of interchange the red palm oil with the coconut oil because they each have different nutritional properties. And remember, when you're feeding your bird, variety is the key. Now, the seeds and, uh, you know, are, the seeds are so full of nutrition uh, and the essential fatty acids and, and stuff that also have super healthy skin healing properties. This one I don't uh, carry, but you can get it at Walmart. It's a, by a brand called Badia, and I'm sure there's other ones, but you can buy this on Amazon or Walmart. And basically it's flaxseed, chia seed, and hemp seed, all super nutritional uh, seeds. And just a little shake is all they need, uh, depending on your bird's size. Um, Remember, you can feed too much of the fatty acids. This is our best-selling product, hemp seed, which is just chock full of all kinds of nutrients, including the omega fatty acids and stuff that your bird needs to have healthy skin. So think of keeping skin healthy from the inside out and the outside in, and your bird will start getting better, um, uh, hopefully, and you can avoid, um, you know, any other illnesses uh, by feeding your bird a proper diet and by treating taking good care of its skin. So I hope this is helpful. Check out the blog post um, and uh, you know uh, you can read that at your leisure and even print it out and, and some of these lists of vegetables start adding them to your bird's diet. Now if you found this video helpful please give me two thumbs up and consider subscribing. Whenever uh, I get a certain amount of subscribers YouTube really kind of promotes my videos a little bit more and I do get so much feedback about how helpful these videos are and I'm in it to for the birds you know I'm in it to help birds have a healthy well lifestyle and so uh, anytime that you can subscribe or like or make comments and what have you it just really that engagement helps YouTube and helps me to know what you guys want to hear more about and learn more about and helps YouTube to spread the word that you know we got to take good care of our birds so thanks a lot, and we will talk later. Bye-bye.